we've just taken delivery of about six bags of 10 mil decorative gravel so that's gonna hopefully I've worked it out as being enough <laughs> that's gonna finish off that path and then the food forest is almost complete so keep watching and you'll see what is very nearly the finished article right phone down get my gravel on am I done am I done pretty much do you want to see come on keeping with the name of the channel petals on the paving slabs we've still got some pots of flowers that will drop their petals onto the paving slabs but straight outside the back door we have a patio area a little bit of furniture to sit down on silver bin is going to either have steeper gigantica or Himalayan honeysuckle we haven't decided whichever one of those two doesn't go in there will end up going in that plastic bin where there's currently a pear tree which I think is Santa Maria in the winter I'm gonna once the leaves have dropped off I'll move that pear tree into the food forest it's done it's it's pretty much done guys there's only one or two more things to be planted out oh my word finally so going back a few videos in the food forest playlist right at this front edge at the edge of the patio area where that ends into the soil it's mainly decorative ornamentals and if the there are certain plant that has a particular meaning to either me or our claire i.e they remind us of a loved one that's no longer with us then they're going up on this front edge so we've got a spiria, a hydrangea, some garlic chives. I've recently just planted out a couple of uh, verbena bonariensis, fuchsia, army nurse, rose, um, special grandma, and a hollyhock against the wall, which was grown from a seed taken from Claire's nana Joyce. Oh, before hang on, before we do the rest of the food forest, fig. We've actually got figs. There's quite a few on the fig tree. Um, and I think for all these years, people have been lying to us. Because like all, all the wisdom I'd come across was saying, oh, restrict the roots, you know, keep them contained and it stresses the plant and it gives you more figs. Well, we had it restricted and we got nothing. Zero. It's about four or five years old literally a week after planting it out into this little border it started forming figs so right back to the food forest hang on a couple of ferns there just again for for decorative purposes so pear tree which will be getting moved into here now we're on to the food part of the food forest so starting here where the path is We've got smallish plants and they get larger, or they will do when they finally mature and grow. Um, you've got to think of the future with this, because like some of the things I've planted out, it's not at the full height yet, and it'll take a few years to get to the full height. But as we go back towards the wall, the, uh, the final height of the plants will be taller. So tall stuff at the back. We've got a quince there with our one and only quince fruit on it for this year. Comfrey, um, all sorts of herbs, winter savoury, golden marjoram, lawn chamomile, I'm hoping that'll just give us a bit of cover. In some of the gaps I've put either lettuce, um, which is a winter hardy type, I think it's called something like four season marvel, so I've got a few of those lettuces. And I've also in the gaps planted out some leeks which I believe were Musselboro leeks. So let's let's walk onto these decking planks which I've left out just to give me a walkway until I get some sort of mulch. Um, not quite sure exactly what my mulch is gonna be yet, whether I just get a load of wood chips or if I continue to use cuttings of the conifer. We'll see, we'll see. However, so that fuchsia, army nurse fuchsia, 
Um, I've read somewhere that all berries on fuchsias are edible. Obviously some taste nicer than others, but apparently they make a half decent jam once you've boiled them up with some sugar. So it's kind of killing two birds with one stone having that fuchsia. We get the lovely flowers to look at and then also when, it, when the flowers start to form berries, um, we've got the berries that we can eat. So, right, I'm quite, quite happy with this one. I've actually got two of these. It's a Myrtus Ugni, or Chilean Guava. The variety is Kapow. And if you look here, it's got a few berries on it. So I've got another one there, behind the rosemary. So that should get about just over a metre tall. So again, it's in its juvenile stage at the moment. It, eventually it'll, it'll bush out and get a bit taller. Quince, now... Not edible, but we've got a buddleia, and that's mainly for the insects. Um, principal insect being the butterfly. Now I know that they lay like caterpillars, which eat all your your stuff. But how beautiful is it going to be to have that buddleia covered in butterflies? Another name for buddleia is also the butterfly bush. So that's just going to be nice. It's attracting insects to the garden. Also along the back. I've got um, two Prunus spinosa, black form, commonly known as slow. They'll give us slow berries, which we can use to make slow gin with. I've got a, a dwarf, very small, compact growing blackberry called, I think it was Black Cascade. So that should stay in a, a low bush form. And then we've got an aronia or chokeberry variety is Viking. Again, that's going to get a lot bigger than what it currently is. Um, got to be patient with this. All this, like the, the black form, the chokeberry, in a few years' time, they'll be up there. They'll be covering that back wall. But for now, they're, they're quite sort of like naked looking plants. I've got various um, leeks and verbena bonariensis and then that it's just a if it works it works it's a cutting i took off this rosemary which is next to the pond also next to the pond we've got now it's not edible i'm going it purely because it's a space filler and it's saved us a few quid because i i dug it up out the gravel at the front of the house it's a white flowering japanese anemone I'm sure I did a video about that a couple of years ago, doing another one that I dug up out of the gravel, um, potted on, and it survived, so I planted that out. We've got common green sage, French tarragon, probably cut a little bit off that to be honest. Again, we've got some more lettuce, uh, rhubarb, thyme, various different varieties of strawberries, flat leaf parsley, lemon balm. English lavender, some more lettuce, variegated sage, I can't see from here what the variety is. I've got curly leafed or moss parsley, some chives, and then in here I've planted out our goji berry bush which is trailing over the arch. Now the goji was growing in a tyre down the side of my house, but we've got rid of that tyre today and I've planted out the bush. And we do actually have one little flower on it, which is there. Let's focus. There you go. How pretty is that? Over the next few weeks, I am expecting a few more flowers. We've never actually had berries off it yet, though. But we do get flowers around August, September, going into October time. And they're just nice. They're pretty. And if nothing else, even if I don't get berries off this goji it'll help cover the arch it'll make you feel like you're going through a tunnel when you go through the arch and there's also plenty of woody material I can cut off it as it continues to grow which I can then just throw on the floor and use as a mulch so we've got the second Chilean guava a um, few more leeks a couple more verbena bonariensis Got a black currant bush there. More lemon balm. 
Got a couple of different types of marjoram, one there and one there, another strawberry plant, another fuchsia, again same variety, army nurse, some English lavender, which I recently gave a trim. When you're trimming lavender, only cut it back to the green growth, don't cut into the woody growth because it probably won't regrow. And then in the, the raised brick D-shaped planter, we've got at the moment one solitary um, hazel. Uh, it's an eating, we're gonna, well hopefully if we get nuts on it, we're going to use it for eating. It's a Kentish cob. Now to get that to pollinate, I do need to buy another type of hazel so it will pollinate. Um, but I've got a plan for that, that's going to be bare root in the winter and I'll find a space to, to put the second hazel into. So what else have we got? A white flowering thyme, a couple more strawberries, that's an alpine strawberry. Some lovage, um, a, a dwarf raspberry, ruby beauty, that variety is. And then, oh, here's one. There was a bit of a gap in the decking boards. So I've put that um, alpine succulent in. We'll see how it does. It's looking okay. It's not died yet. So we'll see how that does. And then on this side, um, lots of lettuce, some more leeks, some more English lavender, a gorgeous little hookah called caramel. And then behind this fence thing that me and Olivia made, we've got some raspberries. I think there's about four or five in there. And then behind that, in another raised brick planter, we've got a couple of strawberries, a plum tree, and a tree fern. And then in that corner, there's another fern. And then what have we got? Purple sage, Corsican mint, some more lawn chamomile. This stuff doesn't flower, so I won't I won't have flowers on that to be picking uh, to dry out and make tea with. Again, for the other lawn chamomile that we've got, it's purely just to give us a bit of ground cover. Because as we all know, where there's a plant, you won't get a weed. And then on this side of the arch, I've got a passion flower, which I took from a cutting from this passion flower here. They're gorgeous, aren't they? And I've also popped in two globe artichokes. We'll see how they do. To be honest, I think I'm for this time of year, middle of August. I think they're a bit on the small side. I should have planted them out ages ago, but. If you've been following this journey with the food forest, it wasn't ready ages ago. So you've got to work with what you've got, haven't you? If they work, they work. If they don't, I've I've lost about two pence because that's how much the seeds cost me. So, so it's done. Now, there are a few more gaps, which over time, um, either I've got two plants for, either the existing plants that I have will bush out and fill, or I'll get some plants to, to fill those gaps with. And as my chili and guavas grow, I want to get them to grow up. So I'll uh, probably put some canes in and tra trail some of these leggy arms which are currently going out horizontally. I'll, I'll trail them up so it grows up. I can't remember if I mentioned the comfy as well. We've got a nice comfy patch there, which will give us some uh, feed to feed the rest of this garden with. So, do you know what? I'm going to sit down. It has been an absolute labour of love. There's been times when I never ever thought it would get done. There's been times when it's it's actually broken me physically. Um, I've put my back out so many times over the last couple of months. Lugging all this soil and throwing rocks around and all the rest of it. There's been times when it's driven me to distraction, like painting the wall. It's one of the most boring things in the world, but it's worth it in the end. Uh, and then emotionally as well, there's been ups and downs emotionally. I've been stressed about it. I'm, I've been getting, the more I've done, the more and more attached I've become to it. So if anyone, has, anyone else has ever sort of like redone a garden on such a scale like we've done here, You'll, you'll be able to relate to what I'm saying. So this is me now. 
this garden is now part of me because I have put part of myself into it wow I'm just glad it's done honestly glad it's done and um, it's a bit of a shame that it's the middle of August and not the start of spring when I could get to see everything grow a lot more but there's always next year that's the thing about gardening isn't it you've always got one eye in the future so I'm already looking forward to next year thinking of all the herbs we can get from it and the, the various bits of fruit oh it's going to be amazing so thank you for following us on this journey with the food forest the playlist isn't over now there'll be various continual updates to it as and when I do little jobs in the food forest still got all my other playlists running as well um, I'll be continuing to upload videos on a regular basis so if you've not already if you click on the subscribe button and then click on the notification bell that will give you an alert every time I've uploaded a video so that you'll get to see the rest of this journey for those of you that are already with me on this journey thank you so much for sticking along for the ride if you're new welcome it's nice to have you here with us right just as always guys thank you so much for watching because I've just finished my food forest I am now going to have a couple of cans of lager and have a bit of a celebration it's been that kind of last few months honestly so I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bit of a party tonight right thanks guys see you around some people call it stealing but I call it foraging <laughs> some people call it stealing you call it foraging it's blackberries yeah. Are they nice? <laughs> Hot shower! <laughs>